Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to the finale, day 30 of our favorite female fronted bands of all time. This has been a fun month, giving some love to the ladies. All 30 days of November, each and every day, I've been listing one of my favorite 30 bands that have a female or two or three fronting a band in the realms and genres of all forms of rock, classic rock, hard rock, pop rock, pop, progressive rock, all forms of metal, right? We've kind of run the gamut this month and delivered lots and lots of different bands, some well-known, some not so well-known, from all parts of the world, right? That's what it's all about, to be able to enjoy music and musicians and singers and songwriters uh, from just about every part of the globe. I mean, that's, you know, there's so much rich, wonderful music that's being put out there each and every day, all throughout the years. Um, and it's always a pleasure kind of doing these sort of things where you just kind of open it up to, you know, the wide spaces, the wide points of different styles of music and things like that. So today, uh, for day 30, a uh, band I've been waiting to talk about all month, uh, this was a band that was not around for too long. They only released two albums. They basically formed from the ashes of, and, and I mean ashes literally, um, of Leonard Skinner, of course, after the plane crash in 1979. Uh, a few members regrouped under the name the Rosington Collins Band. Okay, these are the two albums they released. Anytime, Anyplace, Anywhere was the debut, a great debut. This is the way was the follow up band disbanded after that second album not quite as good as the first album but still pretty strong, but you know, of course a southern rock band because when you have uh, Alan Collins and Gary Rosington uh, fronting a band from you know of course from Leonard Skinner you got to have those comparisons but they weren't the only ones right so basically you had Billy Powell on keyboards also from Skinner you had Leon Wilkinson on bass guitar also from Skinner so you had these surviving members of Skinner deciding they wanted to do something a little bit differently. They did not want to call it Skinner. Uh, and then they brought out on uh, vocals, right? You got the great Dale Krantz on lead vocals, who also would become Mrs. Gary Rosington, right? So you, they later got married, Dale Krantz Rosington. Also Barry Lee Harwood on guitars and vocals, and uh, Derek Hess on drums or percussion. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, it's Southern Rock. But if I were to give this any sort of uh, kind of comparison, uh, you know, a couple days ago, uh, we talked about the Tedeschi Trucks band. And also, if you're watching the channel today, I do review uh, those four new Tedeschi Trucks band albums. Uh, that's another band who, you know, kind of get lumped into the Southern Rock category, but yet don't follow all the same tropes and have all the same elements that lots of other bands so you know in, in in that style of music so while you've got all these like leonard skinner folks in this band this music is much more bluesy uh laid back in spots there's lots of pop elements here this is uh even though you got you know these three great guitar players in this band um not not wall-to-wall -wall blistering guitar solos and guitar nasty guitar licks and all that stuff yeah you get a little bit of it but this is more about creating uh catchy memorable bluesy rock songs right like i said there's a pop element on here you know dale really good singer really good singer you know of course you know uh, she had she's been doing backup vocals and skinner for like a million years now as well so uh but yeah let's see if i got it picture of them in here in this little collection here this wonderful bgo collection uh let's see so here you got uh you know this there's all of them there right dale gary allen barry billy derek leon uh let's see if there's anything else here i can show you there we go <clears throat> you know the big single of course on the first album was don't misunderstand me which is a great song it's got a nice little guitar lick it's got a great memorable chorus uh you got prime time is another killer song three times as bad more of a soulful ballad you know some uh you can at times 
Dale's got a kind of uh, Janis Joplin light style of vocals, right? She's not quite as like histrionic as Janis, but uh, you know, One Good Man, some gospel on this album as well, right? Uh, Getaway's a great song, Winners and Losers. Misery Loves Company is terrific. Uh, the second album, you got Gotta Get It Straight, which is a great lead off track. Um, you got uh, Pine Boys, Fun, or Pine Box, sorry. Um, what else we got in here? I'm Free Today. Don't stop me now. Yeah, not not as many memorable memorable songs on the second album as there were on the first, but it's still still pretty good. And uh, but that would be it. So you're basically you're looking at 1979 to 1982 was the kind of timeline for this band. And uh, of course that went away. You had Alan Collins and doing some solo stuff. The Alan Collins band. He of course would get into that horrific accident, and uh, you know basically he that was the end of his performing days. And then you know before you blink, at the end of the 80s, uh, Leonard Skinner's back together with Johnny Van Zandt on the vocals, and uh, once again the, the second wave of Leonard Skinner begins. So uh, that's my pick for today. The last day here, Rosington Collins Band. Anytime, any place, anywhere is the album to listen to if you haven't heard this band before. And uh, you might like it. if you're not much of a southern rock fan, you might really dig this band because again, they're more bluesy, soulful, gospel-y, pop R&B type of thing. You know, with that little little bit of southern rock raunch, but uh, really, really uh, mature <clears throat> songwriting on this album and fine, fine songs. Again, in their songs, this is you know not they're not long songs. There's not uh, all extended jams and things like that. Not what this band was all about. So uh, <clears throat> really good stuff. Tala Tala really likes uh, Rosington Collins band, right? You like Dale Dale uh, Krantz Rosington, yeah. You like her as a singer, right? You can talk to her. There you go. I wanted her to talk to you. So uh, so yeah. So that is my pick for today. Uh, and let's do the honorable mentions. Why don't we? All right? Shall we? I've got a lot of them, and uh, you know some of these um, I felt bad that they didn't make my top 30, but you can only squeeze so many in. But uh, I like these bands a lot, so it's like I, you know, the fact that I'm talking about them today, giving them some love. That's what it's all about. So uh, let's start off with the Devil's Blood, okay, featuring the vocals of Farida Lamucci, otherwise known as the Mouth of Satan. Right, Devil's Blood were only around for a couple of years. Very cool, kind of a cult, hard rock metal band. Right, very very interesting act there. Uh, Lana Lane, right? the great great singer, the the, the what, what do they call her? The the voice oh, of Lane. the voice of melodic rock, the queen of melodic rock, right? So Lana Lane, of course, you know, again, many think of her as a solo artist because they use her name, but she actually has uh, had you know it's mainly the same band that has played on most of their albums, you know, other than changing a musician or so or two here or there. Uh, of course, featuring uh, her husband, Eric Norlander, on keyboards all the way from the beginning, Lana Lane. Uh, After Forever, <clears throat> the really cool, symphonic, extreme metal band fronted by Flor Janssen. Okay. Great band. That, another one of those early bands that uh, started the kind of like a Beauty and the Beast type of thing with the uh, you know male growling death metal vocals and the angelic female vocals. So Flor Janssen and Mark Janssen. Okay, who did the two two vocals? Great band after forever, of course. Uh, he left once that band split up. He went to form uh, Epica, and she went to join Nightwish. Right, uh, Heavy Temple, very very cool New York uh, heavy rock doom stoner band, fronted by a lady named High Priestess Nighthawk. Not sure what her real name is. She also plays bass and sings. Great, great band. I, they almost made my top thirty, but I've only just started getting into them real recently. So I was like, all right, let me. At least put them in my honorable mentions. Uh, going to the prog world from the UK, Magenta. Great, great prog band from the UK uh, featuring Christina Booth on lead vocals. Uh, Got to talk about ABBA here. You all know I, I have an affinity for ABBA. Um, featuring, I know I'm going to butcher these names. I can never say their names. Uh, Annie Fried Lingstadt and Agnetha Falskog. Okay, ABBA just had been a tremendous band for so, so many years. So many great hits in the 70s and the early 80s. Uh, Frumpy, another great European prog band from the 70s featuring the great skills on vocals of Inga Rumpf. Frumpy are a very, very cool band. If you haven't checked them out, definitely do so. Really, really good stuff. She's got a really kind of gritty voice. Um, really, really cool music. Uh, why, why not? Or why, why not? Uh, very interesting U.S. band who uh, originally got their start as a Rush cover band, but now have been doing some original music of their own, uh, featuring uh, Patty Prashela on vocals um, and prior uh, Rocky Kuna on vocals as well. 
Uh, another throwback from the 80s for me, a band that I was fr- pretty much into for a number of years in the 80s and kind of like fell out of touch with them. But uh, the band Chastain, led by, of course, uh, guitar shredder extraordinaire David Chastain and featuring the uh, awesome vocals of Leather Leone. She, man, she was a ripper back in the day. She could she could shred glass with that voice of hers, man. Some really good albums from Chastain back in the day. Uh, <clears throat> Got to mention Lita Ford again. She's more of a solo artist, but she you know throughout the eighties did have a pretty solid band for a number of years. You know Lita, of course, we gave lots of props to Lita during the Runaways episode we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, next up, another cool kind of a throwback band, kind of like an occult hard rock band called Person P U R S O N, featuring the. Uh, skills on guitar and vocals of Rosalie Cunningham. Sadly, I don't think they're anymore. They released two albums. I, th- I think they broke up. Uh, Mother's Finest. Cool, hard rock and funk band featuring Joyce Baby Jean Kennedy. Right? Cool band. Uh, Leaves Eyes, another European kind of symphonic metal act. Leaves Eyes featuring originally the vocals of Liv Christina. Liv Christine. Uh, she was then replaced by Elena Sirala. Okay, Liv, of course, has gone on to a solo career. Uh, Here's another interesting band, uh, kind of, again, kind of like an occult, hard rock, psychedelic band, Jess and the Ancient Ones, featuring the guitar, uh, the guitar, the uh, vocal skills of Jess, real name, uh, Yasmin Sorella. Okay, Jess and the Ancient One, very cool band, kind of an obscure band, but uh, I think would appeal to a lot of people who watch Sea of Tranquility. Uh, Go back to the 70s for the... uh, Great UK band. I've seen a lot of people mention them here in the comments. Babe Ruth, featuring Jenny Han on lead vocals. Cool band. Kind of hard rock and prog, some pop. Gotta mention Missing Persons, right? Featuring uh, Miss Dale Bozio, right? Wife of Terry Bozio. Very unique kind of new wave pop band, right? Uh, I, I, they almost made my top 30. I, I have I have always had a soft spot for the Go-Go's. You know, Linda Carlisle. So gorgeous, great voice. Belinda Carlisle, of course, uh, Gina Shock, Charlotte Caffey, Kathy Valentine, Jane Weedland, right? It's all female band. Very, very cool band. Uh, Delaney and Bonnie, right? Another 70s band. Again, kind of similar to Tedeschi Trucks band, right? Kind of like that laid back, bluesy rock, gospel, RB type of thing, little bits of folk, featuring uh, Bonnie Bramlett on lead vocals. Uh, Lacuna Coil, great Italian. Uh, Symphonic metal band, and they're not so much symphonic. I guess they kind of are, uh, featuring Christina Scabia, right? Fairly popular band too. They've they've been consistently pretty popular here in the states. Of course, much much bigger in like South America and Europe. Uh, the Carpenters, love the Carpenters, love the pop of the Carpenters. Uh, Karen Carpenter, what a great singer. I mean, she's greatly missed. Wanted to mention them. Uh, another symphonic metal act, Delane, featuring uh, Charlotte Wessels, who I believe now is, is has left the band. Uh, and replaced by uh, Diana Leah. Okay, so I have not heard any of the material with Diana on the vocals, but uh, plenty of solid albums with Charlotte. Uh, fairly new band to me, but I really dig them a lot. Uh, Atomic Symphony, featuring uh, Yasmin Bagenstos. Very cool progressive metal act. And last but not least, uh, I'm going to choose uh, Within Temptation, featuring Sharon Den Adel, uh, another great female fronted uh, European band. Uh, symphonic metal right modern metal that type of thing they've, they've kind of changed their sound over the years early on uh, maybe not that different from like say Nightwish or Epica that sort of thing now the much much less on the symphon- early symphonic classical type of thing but uh, definitely ch- she's an amazing singer amazing singer you know I had a lot of people asking Pete well how come when are you going to mention uh, the, the great uh, all female band from the 70s Fanny right and I'm like you know guys it's one of those bands I've always heard about. I've never listened to a lick of them. So, you know, obviously there's there's plenty of bands that I haven't heard, just like you haven't heard. Uh, so, uh, you know, my, my point here this entire month was just not to mention every notable female band and every top-selling female band, uh, female-fronted band. Uh, we all picked our favorites, right? That's what we did. So uh, if I haven't heard a band, as notable as they may be or as much as you guys may love them, 
I'm not going to put them on my list if I haven't heard them, right? That doesn't make any sense. So, uh, yeah, so there's my list, uh, or there's my honorable mentions list, and my final pick, of course, Rosin to Collins Band. Uh, some of you have asked, uh, are you going to post the entire list? Yeah, in the comments below, I'll pin uh, my entire list for the month, all 30, all 30 days, all 30 picks, as well as all my honorable mentions, so you guys can go and reference that and uh, go check out some of the bands you missed. So, uh Thanks for watching each and every day. You know, it's uh, it, it's sometimes a crapshoot on these monthly topics. Uh, you know, they're a lot of work for me, um, but I like doing them because I think it gives you fresh stuff each and every day. And I know a lot of you like to take part in these in the comments, which I think is it's what it's all about, right? It's not just so much me here talking. It's more about getting you guys discussing bands and music in the comments below and certainly in the chat. And uh, I love seeing that every day. That's what it's all about. So, you know, if, if three to 6,000 people a day will watch these little five, 10 minute long videos, that's cool right you know it's not part of the main thing what we do here but um, I think it's good and I think it uh, it kind of really solidifies the community you guys have helped build in the comments section and in the chat discussing this music and that, that's that's what we do here we just discuss music and once a week we discuss movies but uh, but yeah so uh, stay tuned starting tomorrow we will have my number 31 album of the year I am still finalizing my list because you know you know how it goes, right? Uh, I've got a list from the whole year of really notable albums that's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 or thereabouts. Uh, you can only fit 31 onto the the show. You know, obviously on the website I'll give you my entire list, but uh, you know I can only fit 31 picks uh, for the month. So I have to try to figure out what are my favorite 31, and I feel really bad about some that may not make the show. They'll make my overall longer list and honorable mention list for the year but i'm trying to make sure that the 31 that are on that are featured every day this in december that are my absolute favorites and i have like maybe four or five that haven't made the list and i'm really i'm going over the list and going over the list and i'm like can i substitute can i pull out it's really hard and it's really hard and it's like you know there are some albums that I think like technically are better than others, but it's like but what it comes down to are which are the ones that I have liked and listened to the most because I put a lot of stock into albums that I listen to the most. And it's like even though I mean perfect example, you know, you could I could rate <clears throat> one album four out of five stars. I know it's maybe not a perfect album, but you know, it's four out of five is really, really good. And that album may be the most listened to album I have for the year. There may be another album that I give a five out of five star because it's technically brilliant. Everything about it is just perfect. But I wind up not listening to that one as much as the other one. So I will rank in my final ranking. I will rank the four out of five one higher, right? Just because that's I just gravitate towards it more. I realize it's not perfect, but it resonates with me. So that's what I struggle with when I do these end of year lists all the, every year, year after year after year. Um, and so I'm going through that right now. So I literally have 24 hours to figure this damn thing out. At least, at least the, the bottom one, right? Number 31. <clears throat> so like I said, I've got like three or four that I really want to get into the list. And I'm like, all right, what can I pull out here? So, um, so yeah, so there, there are obviously going to be in my top 31, there's going to be some albums that will not appear that I think are brilliant, must hear. They're just not going to make the final 31 day show, right? They'll make my final list for the year. Um, so yeah, so I'm grappling with that right now. So anyway, you don't have to worry about that. That's what I'm worried about. So stay tuned tomorrow for for pick number 31, day one of my favorite albums of 2022. I highly recommend you guys stay tuned each and every day. I have reviewed all of these albums on the on the channel here this year and on the website, pretty much most of them. Uh, so if they, you've probably heard of them before, but seeing as how few people watch the new album reviews each and every week, and that's the facts, guys. You know, I you know the daily shows I do get anywhere from three to six thousand views. Uh, I struggle to get a thousand views on the new the new album reviews on Wednesday. It's just it's just reality, right? People don't seem to care about new music that much. All right, I know some of you do. I'm not talking to everybody, but uh, that's just the, the sad reality. So, uh, so chances are some of you, many of you, might have missed the initial reviews of some of these albums that I'm going to be revealing over the next 31 days. So, uh, I highly recommend you check into them, check them out. Um, these are they're going to be fairly short. I'm not going to go into full reviews of any of these anymore. These will be fairly short videos, basically just you know quick 
here's the album, here's where it is on my ranking, <clears throat> here's a little bit of information about them, that's it, see it tomorrow. So uh, there's no going to be, it's not going to be five to ten minute long review videos because I've already done that, right? If you want to hear more about each of the picks, okay, go back here on the channel and watch the actual review. So these are, like I said, these are probably going to be three minute and less videos, all right? Really short each day. So uh, there you have it. See you tomorrow for pick number 31. This is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Thanks for playing along each and every day this month as we uh, highlighted and talked about the ladies all month, our favorite female-fronted bands of all time. And uh, once again, it's been fun, but uh, December 1st is tomorrow. We'll see you then for the new topic, best of the year. Top 31 albums of 2022 till then. I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching. Oh, and lots of new album reviews today, so don't miss those, all right? See you later. Bye-bye.